In my opinion, you should not use Azure Synapse replicated databases with Power BI, particularly if you're going to publish that Power BI report up to a service. For instance, what, what do I mean by replicated database? Well, let's just go to Synapse real quick. When I, I'm talking about this, these databases right here, right? When you go into a lake database and you see that you created a database in Spark and now you automatically get that database in Azure um, Synapse serverless SQL pools, right? That database, you don't want to use that in Power BI because you're going to hit blocker after blocker after blocker. What you should do instead is in an Azure Synapse serverless SQL pool, you should build your own database, create a database there, build your own table structures and data sources there, and then use that one in Power BI. And why do I say that? Well, first off, if you use a SQL Server um, account, so you just like a SQL authentication account, right? So I've got one here that I've got SQL admin user, and I query a data structure here. You get an error, cannot find the credential, and this is pointing me back to my Azure Data Lake storage account. So this is an external table, right? And the external table is pointing to an ADLS Parquet file, right? You can even see that right here, right? A Parquet file, right? And it says you don't have permission. So you're thinking, OK, well, what do I have to do to build a permission? Maybe I need to create a, a scoped credential. Maybe I need to, um, you know, change to DB owner, right? That would be a that would be a valuable thing here, right? So if I come here and I say, OK, um, alter role DB owner to Power BI uh, user. So this is this is a different um, SQL authentication account, right? Or, but it could just as easily be the other one. So let's add it to DB owner and see if that solves the problem. It says no, operation alter role is not allowed for a replicated database. Okay, so that solution's off the table. One, one more blocker that you can't do in a replicated database. You can't add any uh, uh, SQL authentication users to DB owner or any other role really, right? So that's not that great, right? So then you could say, well, I'm gonna create a database scope credential here um, and I'm gonna do that you know, in an original data mart, right? And that that will that might work, right? You could, pardon me, you, you can do this part. And then you say, well, then I want to see this works, right? So then what I want to do is create an external data source uh, using that scope credential. And when you run that, it says, hey, you can't do that in a replicated database. So for all of those reasons, the solution is to not use the replicated database. So if you don't want to use the replicated database, what do you do? Well, here's what you do. So, oh, and here's another reason. The replicated databases, when you go look at your data sources, your external data sources, they name them really funny, right? So what I would do, let's say you've got this, this is a replicated database. Sales Data Mart's a replicated database, right? And you want to build this in a different database. Well. The first thing you should do is make sure that this external file format exists in the other database that you created in your serverless SQL pool. So if you right click this and you script the database here. OK, so create external file format parquet. Make sure that exists in the brand new database that you created. The next thing that you should do is right click on one of these bogus data source names and just um, create that. OK, now this one is for uh, dim date, right? So the automatic automatic replicated database for serverless SQL was uh, the table's called dim date, right? It's right. It's this one right here, dim date, right? OK, well, take that exact script, but just call it DS dim date and, and put that in the other database that you created, right? So now you've got a reasonable name. Now, once you've got that, right click on dim date and then script that one out and then once you've done that we apply this data source to um you know ds dim date right that that's the data source and run that thing on the other uh you know in the other database and if you do that then things kind of start working for you. Specifically, one thing you might want to do with this data source is if you've got uh, uh, ADLS errors going, you might want to use a, a scoped credential here 
So just tack on a scope credential and then and then now you're being very declarative about the permissions that you're giving this data source moving to the Azure Data Lake storage account, right? And then from, yeah, and then from here, just make sure that the data source is there. And now you can use SQL authentication. Now you get rid of those errors that I saw earlier, right? This error that um, we had, do, 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 do uh, this one right here, right? Uh, where, do, 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 where is it? That error, right? That, that was our original error that we were having, right? So we get rid of that. All right. And that's it. Don't use replicated databases with Power BI. I'm going to show you how to bring in Power BI credentials uh, when in just a second. I'll create a later video for that. Uh, so hopefully that helps you out. Thanks. Have a great day.